Hi, second grade, Miss Johnson here. I miss you guys oh so much, and so I was super excited when your teachers asked if I could chime in and help you guys with a standard that they usually teach to you, and Miss Johnson helps out a little bit in the classroom. But um, I said, sure, why not? And so I hope you guys enjoy the lesson I prepared for you today. We're gonna watch a couple videos, we're gonna talk, we're gonna do some experiments. So I'm very excited, and let's get started. So today we are going to be learning about sound waves, okay? So let's go ahead and look at our next slide. So the standard we're working on specifically is forces and motion, all right? Today we're going to understand the relationship between sound and vibrating objects. Did you guys know that they go together? If you did, if you didn't, you're going to know today, okay? So, first thing we're going to do, we are going to do an experiment, and we're going to use our own voices, because that's something that we always have with us. And believe it or not, guys, our voices create these vibrations when we talk, okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little experiment. And first, I just want you to put your hands maybe on your chest, just right below your shoulders. And I want you to sing. That's right. We're going to sing a little bit. I want you to sing la 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 la. Try it. Okay. Now sing la 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 la. Okay. Did you notice anything by chance? La 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 la. Hmm. I didn't feel anything on my chest. La 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 la. I felt a little vibration right here on my chest. Let's try a different spot. Put your hands on your cheeks. No. <laughs> All right. Sing the same thing. Go la 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 la. Did you feel anything? Not too much. What about la 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 la? Ooh. I felt a little something. All right. Last one. Put your hand gently on your throat, right here. Inside our throat, we have this amazing instrument and it's called our voice box and our voice. And inside, even right now, as Ms. Johnson's talking, I can already feel vibrations happening on my hand. So when we sing, when we talk, when we scream, when we whisper, our voices are creating these vibrations, these sounds. So, put your hand on your throat and go, la, 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 la. Ooh, for the first time, I felt that higher sound, that higher pitch vibrate. What about the low one? La, 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 la. Whoa, that tingled a lot. So, in your journals today, you're going to be answering a question. Where did you feel the vibrations of your voice the best on your body? Now, you guys can keep exploring. You can put your hands behind your back. You can put them on your forehead. All right, find a spot and write it in your journal. Where did you feel those vibrations the best? So, what is a sound wave, guys? Sound is made up of vibrations, just like you just felt, or sound waves. That's what we can call it, that we can hear. These sound waves are formed by objects objects vibrating or shaking back and forth really fast. Sound waves travel through the air. They can travel through water or even solid objects as vibrations. Okay? So, we are going to watch a really neat example, okay? Um, I actually would show you guys this in music class if we were together. But in this example, this is going to be another one of your journal responses you have. So what happened to the water when the frog's pitch got higher or lower? So let's go take a look at some videos. My screen's going to look really crazy, and I apologize. All right, the first one we're going to look at is this guy here. And this is an American toad singing with rippling water, okay? Now, we know he looks a little silly, but this video is so cool. Earlier I said we can see those sound waves travel through water. Well, here we're going to see this guy make his chirping sound, his singing sound. Watch what happens to the water, because this is a wonderful visual of sound waves. Here it goes. Oh, Miss Johnson can't have a big. 
here it goes. Sorry. Do you see that? No way. Let's watch that again. Do you see the vibrations in the water with his with his voice, with his sound? And then you can hear some others far away in the distance. Now I have another video. This guy has a lower sound. And his is really quick, so we'll watch it a couple times. But tell me, what do you notice about the rippling water in this video compared to the last? Later, I'll give you a little hint. So here is a Michigan, I believe this is a green frog, it's going to tell us in a minute, making his sound in water. Now his sound is obviously much shorter and, and um, quicker. So let's go back and watch it again. Because if we look very closely, we can see a difference. Let me find the perfect spot. Here it is. Ready? Watch close. Mm. One more time. There we go. Here comes. Goggles. All right. So if you were looking really close, you should see a really good, kind of clear difference between the two. So in your journal, you're going to answer. Oh, let me go back to my side real quick. What happened to the water when the frog's pitch in the first one was higher compared to the second frog and his pitch was lower? And I'm going to help you with that in a little bit, okay? So our next slide. I'm going to show you guys a really cool musical site. Um, and there's all kinds of wonderful musical games, but there's one specifically about sign, sound waves. And it's going to show you with the low sounds how the sound waves move compared to higher sounds and how those sound, sound waves move. So let's take a look at that too. So you can go to google.com and you'll search Chrome Music Lab. Okay guys, when you go to Chrome Music Lab, you are going to click on the game called Sound Waves. All right, and it's a really neat game. Down here at the bottom, we have a piano keyboard. On the far left, we're gonna have lower sounds, and towards the right, we're gonna have higher sounds, just like our pitch that we've learned in music. All of these dots are going to represent the air. Okay, and so when I click on a low sound, and I'm going to hold it down. Watch how the air moves because of the sound and the vibrations. Looks pretty cool. So to me, those sound waves kind of moved slowly. So again, the blue dots represent the air. And when we make a sound, it creates vibrations that travel through the air. What if we pick a pitch here in the middle? Are you ready? Do you have any guesses? What's going to happen with a higher pitch? Hmm. Let's see. Whoa! Oh my goodness, I want to do that again. That was fun. How would you describe the difference? I would say that the pitch that was higher vibrated much faster. Let's check it again. So lower pitch, okay, middle pitch, much faster. All right, are you ready for this? What's going to happen when we hear an even higher sound? What's going to happen to the air? What kind of vibrations is it going to have? Ready? Goodness gracious, number one, ouch. Number two, those sound waves moved so much faster. So if you guys want, you can go to this website and you can experiment and play around too, okay? Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Let me get to our slide. 
So a tuning fork. The reason I'm going to show you guys this is because we're going to have one more video lesson together. And in that we are going to be watching a really cool video that has some science experiments. Now a tuning fork is really important to music, or at least it was lots of years ago. I mean, with technology, we have better ways to do it now, but a tuning fork is a big chunk of metal. And in the picture, you can see there's four or five different um, sizes. When we strike it, it creates vibrations. I mean, it's shaking my hand. So this is a tuning fork, okay? When we strike it, it creates a sound, creates vibrations, moves in the air, all right? So our last slide that we have, we're going to look ahead. So like I said, the next time we see each other, I'm going to share with you an awesome video with some neat science experience all about sine waves. And you are going to make some hypothesis. And a hypothesis is an educated guess or a guess you make based on information you already know. So since Ms. Johnson has taught you a little bit about vibrations and sound waves already, you guys are going to be scientists. So in your journal, you're going to answer two questions. And remember, this is just a guess. This is an educated guess. There's no right or wrong. We'll find out next week, so don't worry. The first one is, what do you think will happen when the tuning fork touches water? So if I were to strike this and then put it in a cup of water, what do you think is going to happen? Then number two, what do you think will happen to a ping pong ball hanging from a string, just like in our picture, when the tuning fork gets struck and put close? Hmm. Do you think anything will happen? What do you think is going to happen? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a little bit of knowledge about what sound waves are and vibrations and traveling through the air, how we hear. So I hope you guys enjoyed it again. I miss you and I'll see you again for another lesson. Bye guys.